with you tonight. Uh, please turn with me to the book of Luke, Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5, a uh, familiar story. It seems like the longer, the longer I live, <laughs> the more familiar stories I get, but uh, a very familiar story. I, I was looking yesterday, and I think it was 1990, the first time I preached from this passage, and uh, that's been some time ago, a lot of messages ago, and uh, uh, I, I quit counting how many times I've preached. I think I got up to around 6,000 messages that I had preached, and I quit counting. So uh, I figured, hey, God knows, and that's why I'm doing it anyway. Uh, years ago, I was, uh, in fact, I was a guest speaker down south, and uh, it was the anniversary of the pastor, and uh, one of the fellows of the church got up and and uh, just started talking about the pastor, which I had no problem with that. I mean, you know what? They were uh, building up the uh, the office as much or more than the pastor themselves. But he was talking about um, they had all the he had kept records from the very beginning, and he was going through the the records and he was talking about how many people he had pastored over the years, how many people had gotten saved, how many people had gotten baptized, and uh, different things. And I thought, man. Maybe I should have done that, you know. Maybe I should have kept track of that, you know. I'd had, I know how many. Then I, then about, about no more, more, no more thought that in my mind, you know. And then the thought came in, you know what? I don't have to keep track. God knows, you know. <laughs> uh, you know what? I, just be faithful to do what God's called you to do, and I'm not picking on Him for doing that. I, I think it was an encouragement uh, to the, to for to Him to know the difference He had made in the lives of folks, but uh, I was thinking about a thought, uh, it's interesting, um, over these last few years I've kind of changed my, not only my role here, but I've changed my thought pattern here too, uh, usually when, uh, as far as desiring, uh, you know, when you preach every, just about every service for years, you know, and then you sit in a pew every service for years, it, it for the last three years, it's kind of a little different, you know, I've, a lot of times I want to I want to jump up there and preach, you know, <laughs> scoot over, I'm coming up, you know, uh, how about a double header, you know, uh, but anyway, um, I think about that, but I, in the last, uh, probably the last six months, God has used the preaching to encourage me and encourage my heart, you know, um, for many years, I was preaching to encourage the hearts of people, and now it's seemingly God is using the preaching to encourage me. Even more so, it's always been that in my life. When I heard preaching, I always listened. I try, always looking for something. I, when I hear a message preached or I read a message or, uh, you know what, I, I, I go with it, look in the attitude, you know, give me something that will help me. And uh, it was Sunday night, oh, no, excuse me, last Wednesday night, Pastor was preaching on, uh, talking about, uh, of course, the walk with Christ and was talking about praying for others. And uh, I think it was, if, if I, it may have been, I'm pretty sure it was last Wednesday or the Wednesday before, talking about praying for others and praying for others with praying for wisdom and praying for um, uh, the, uh, to, that God would give them wisdom, praying for people to give, that God would give them wisdom. And I've read, I think the, the passage he had read it from, it was familiar, and, but yet I thought, you know what, many times we pray for people and uh, we need to pray that God would work in their lives and God would give them wisdom. You know, uh, one thing about it, when in our Christian life, uh, God doesn't force us to do anything. God makes it available. You know what? We have to have the wisdom to take that next step, or we have to have the wisdom to accept that which God has. And I was thinking about that. And and uh, this week, uh, uh, my wife and I, when we were praying for folks, we prayed that not only God would, uh, for instance, for healing. I said, God, uh, heal that person. And I, then I'm thinking, God, give them wisdom to know what to choose to, for they could be healed, you know. So it was encouraging. It was a help to me. And uh, I thought, you know what? I might be an old guy, but I'd still learn something. Amen. <laughs> and that's encouraging. But uh, a passage here in chapter 5 of the book of Luke. And um, we'll read the, a few verses and get into the message tonight. In, the same, in, in, in verse 1 of chapter 5, it says, And it came to pass that the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God. Isn't that interesting? 
I thought, what a wonderful thing. The people were so interested that they were gathered together. They were pushing or pressing towards him with the anticipation and the eagerness to hear God's word. I thought, man, wouldn't that be a wonderful day? I said, wouldn't that be a wonderful day today? You know what? The people would want to hear what, God's, what God, uh, God had for them. And he stood by the lake of uh, Gesserit, and he saw two ships standing by the lake. And, but the fishermen were going out uh, of them and were washing their nets. I don't know about you. I'm sure I have this all wrong in my mind, but I kind of picture things in my mind when I read a story in the Bible. Years ago, there was an evangelist. His name was Al Lacey. And Al Lacey had a wonderful, wonderful way of, of telling a story. There was no preacher I've ever heard in my life that could, could tell, a, tell a Bible story and bring it to life. You know what I mean? He, you could see it in your mind, you know. And many times I picture in my mind, here he is, and there's people are pressing him. He keeps backing up, you know, and they keep pressing, keep backing up. And finally he gets to the point where, you know, they're almost up against it, and it's hard to speak to the wolves in the back when they're pressed up against you. So he sees these two um, the ship's there standing uh, by, and he, and he goes on to say, and uh, they were out of the ships, and they were washing their nets, and he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and he prayed him that he would thrust out a little uh, from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. So I see him sitting there, maybe uh, up a little bit higher, and he's sitting on the front of the ship, and the people are on the land, and he kind of used it as a pulpit, you know, a little higher ground there, a higher place, and uh, he's, he's preaching to them. And, of course, they're there, and they want to hear what he has to say. And, he's, and it goes on to say, And now when he had uh, left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught. And Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down thy net. You know, an interesting thing. Uh, these were professional, fish, profesh, professional fishermen. That's what they did for a living. You know, uh, <laughs> When uh, I was thinking when they said they caught nothing, I said I could relate to them, you know. That's most of the time when I go fishing. Uh, you know, my wife said, did you catch anything? No, I got skunked, you know. Uh, then I just decided one day I'm just going to go and enjoy the outdoors whether I catch anything or not. And sometimes I catch something, sometimes I don't. But uh, nevertheless, they were out there and they knew what they were doing. They were professional. This was their livelihood. This, this wasn't just a leisure thing that they were doing. This was their livelihood. And uh, he, he said to him, he said, uh, you know what? He said, uh, he said to him, Master, I have toiled all night and had taken nothing. He said, you know what? We fished all night. We fished all the spots. We, we were out there. I mean, we had, uh, uh, we had all, all of us were out there fishing. We didn't have to catch anything. But notice these next words, and this is uh, the message tonight. He said, nevertheless, at thy word, at thy word, I will let down the net. It's interesting. He said, I know what I'm doing. I'm a fisherman. You know what? He says, I know what I'm doing. I know my business. I know what I'm doing. He says, but you know what? I believe you know what you're doing too. And I'm going to do it not because I think I'm going to catch fish. I'm going to do it because you told me to do it. Basically, what he's saying here, I, I think we'd be safe in saying without stretching a scripture a bit, that he, what he's saying is this. Uh, you know what? I know, my, I know my business, and I know the fishing business, but you know what? I have enough faith in you, or I believe you know what you're doing, so I'm going to do it. He said, never, never, he says, uh, nevertheless, at thy word. I think he's saying, you know what? Humanly speaking, or uh, practically speaking, it's a not. It's a not, you know? No, no fish. But you know what? You're telling me to do it. I'm going to do it. And I thought, you know what? There's a key here that I believe it would be helpful for each and every one of us. If we would quit trying to rationalize or, or uh, what do you call it, uh, situation, the ethics or situation, situations that we are involved in and we say, well, I know what the Bible says, but I can't do it because of this. If we would just decide in our hearts, if we would just decide, I thought, you know what, it had been a wonderful thing if we started when we first got saved, but you know what, maybe we didn't do that when we first got saved. But I thought, how about now, how about from this day forth, we would just take God at his word. If we would just decide to say, nevertheless, at your word, I'll do it. 
Nevertheless, you know what? I don't see how it's going to work out. I don't see how it's going to fit. I don't know what I don't know what tomorrow may bring. By the way, none of us know what tomorrow may bring. You know what? We act and live like we're going to. We we know we have it all figured out. When the truth of the matter is, we don't know what tomorrow may bring. You know, we don't know what tomorrow may bring. You know what? It may be rain. It may be sunshine. It may be sorrow. It may be heartache. It may be joy. We don't know what tomorrow may bring. But you know what? We need to just reside ourselves to say, Lord, whatever you have for me, nevertheless, at thy word, I'm going to be obedient to you. And I thought, you know what? That's what I want. I want to be obedient to God. And I thought, you know what? God will bless that. I know he will. He has, he has in the past. He will today. And I was thinking about that, and I put together some thoughts I'd like to share with you this evening, if I could. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, help me. I need your help. Lord, if I'm going to be an encouragement or a help to the folks tonight, I, I need your help. Lord, I, I surely do. I want, you, I want you to be lifted up and glorified. That's why I'm here. Lord, I want to be a help and encouragement to these folks. And Lord, if either one of those things take place, I need your help to accomplish it. Holy Spirit, have your way not only in the speaking and the preaching of your word, but, Lord, the hearing of it. Lord, I pray you'd use it. Encourage the heart of someone tonight, Lord, that would just say, you know what, I'm just going to do, I'm just going to be obedient to what God has for me. I don't know how it's going to turn out, but I'm just going to trust him and believe him and just, just do today what he'd have for me to do today. And when tomorrow comes, I'll do tomorrow what he'd have for me to, uh, uh, tomorrow. Lord, help us, I pray, each and every one. Bless this time. Use it, I pray. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. So we see the story here, and it's a wonderful story. And we see that they said, you know what? Never, at, nevertheless, at thy word, I'll let down the nets. The very next verse says this. And when they had done this, uh, this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their, and their net break, and beckoned uh, unto their par uh, partners, which were in another ship, that they would uh, come and help them. And it came, and they filled both ships, so that they began to sink. I don't know how many fish I don't know how many fish that they took in that day in that draught, but I got news for you. It filled up the ships, both of them to the point where it's about about ready to sink. I, I, I was thinking, you know, my mind sometimes it's like, uh, uh, you know, uh, I mean that, uh, that. I mean, not only are, I mean there's fish all around. I mean wherever the, there's fish, fish around their feet, you know, and the fish up to their their ankles, up to their knees. I mean they're standing in fish. I mean they might be uh, hopped up on the higher ground because there's so many fish. I mean the boats were about ready to to take in water over the side because there were so many fish. And I thought. And it goes on to say, and I thought, boy, you know, and they said in verse number eight, and Simon, uh, uh, Simon Peter saw it, and he fell down at, at, G, at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him at the draught of the fish which they had, had taken. And it was so, uh, also, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were part, partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not from henceforth, thou shalt catch man. You know, I was thinking about this for quite a few days. I was thinking, what if he wouldn't have took Jesus at his word? What if he wouldn't have took Jesus at his word? I think I'd be safe in saying he would have missed the blessing, would he have not? If he'd have said, hey, you know what? <laughs> I know you're the son of God, but you know what? I'm not going to listen to you. I know better than you. He would have missed the blessing. Not only that, can you imagine the stir that just came? This was a fishing village. This was the, I mean, this was the mainstay of, of their livelihood. Could you imagine the, the stir that went up from this? You know what? Everybody that was down there that day, and there was a multitude there, all the people were down there saw this. You know what? And they had never seen it like this before. You know what? They took, it gave, it gave uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, um, uh, gave him uh, the, uh, the position. You know what? They began to say, you know what? That guy's not just another guy. This guy's got something different about him. And they went on to tell the story of what took place, you know, and how wonderful it was. And I thought, how wonderful. I, wonder, I, I was thinking about this. I was, looking, I was looking at myself first, and I thought, how many blessings have I missed in my lifetime because I didn't listen to God? That I didn't take God at his word. 
that I didn't say, I, I don't care what the situation, circumstances, or what people say, I'm going to believe God. I'm going to start trust God. I, I believe we, uh, I believe we may, it may, it may be the key or at least one of the keys to, to Christ, the Christian life, just taking God at his word. I'm thankful for the Bible, amen. <laughs> I, by the way, I love the King James Bible. I'm thankful for the Bible. I thought, you know, we were singing those old songs today, and I thought, man, I am so thankful for our hymn book. And I said, I'm thankful for that, but most of all, I'm thankful for God's precious word. You know what? We come to church, we, we read, preach, quote uh, God's word, and we sing songs that back it up. Amen. You know what? The songs that we sing, the doctrinal truths from our songbook backs up, backs up the truths that are preached from the pulpit. I thought, you know what? I mean, life-changing doctrine that we sing about in those songbooks. And I thought, you know, uh, uh, how wonderful it is to, to, to experience that. And how, wonder, how blessed we are to have God's word that we have many, uh, uh, numerous copies of the King James Bible. I have a stack of Bibles. In, <laughs> they're all King James Bibles, but I have a stack of Bibles in my office. Some, some in, uh, have more, but I thought, you know, they have a collection of them. Uh, and I thought, you know, how thankful I am for God's word. How encouraged. How many times I've been encouraged when I opened the Bible. How many times I've been ch uh, challenged when I've opened the Bible. I was thinking about it may be the main key or at least a key to success in our Christian life. You know, sometimes we don't succeed. And we don't blame God and blame others when the truth of the matter is, you know what? We need to take God at his word. Nevertheless, at thy word. You know what? When we open God's word, say, God, what do you have for me today? What, what do you have that will encourage my heart? I'm look, when I open the Bible, I'm looking for something, man. I want to get something out of it. I want to, I want to get something that would make a difference in my life. Something that would have me a, a greater desire to love God more and to have a greater desire to serve him in the day and time which we live. We have a wonderful story, not of not of just a draught of fish. And that was a wonderful story that took place. And by the way, Jesus used that to get the attention of, of mankind at this time. And it surely worked. And you know what? Uh, Peter saw it. And you know what? He, he may have been hesitant, but yet, yet he had enough faith. He, yet he had enough faith to believe, God, to believe Jesus and take him in his word. You know what? He said, nevertheless, at thy word. He said, you know what, I might not be fully persuaded, but he says, you know what, I have enough confidence, I have enough faith in you, I'm going to do it. And when it happened, he, he was overwhelmed to the point where he realized, hey, who he was dealing with and who he was standing before. He fell down to his knee, fell down to the, his knees, and, and, and he, said, oh, he said, he saw it, and he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, depart from me, for I am a sinful man. Oh, Lord, he saw, his, he saw him for what he was. He saw himself for what he was. You know what? When we get close to Jesus and we look to him with the right attitude, we see ourselves as we are. <laughs> you know what? Oftentimes, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. I was thinking about heaven, and I'm thinking about the fact that, that, uh, uh, that I'm, I'm one of these days when, when this life is over, I'm going to a better place. And I'm thankful, how thankful I am for that. And I thought it was because of what Christ has done for me. I'm a wicked sinner, deserves hell, but I'm going to heaven because of his grace and his mercy. I don't deserve it. But he's made a way. He's, way to, he's made a way for me. I thought, why, why, could, why do we struggle by, take, by not taking him at his word? And I was thinking about this. Simon, we see that which took place in Simon Peter's life, and I was thinking about that he toiled, and yet he, was, he failed. I was thinking about how many times we'll try something, and, and we try it in our own mind, our own strength, and we fail. I'm going to hurry up because I want to get to my first point. Uh, how we struggle with, struggle with it and we, when we try in our own strength. I was thinking about the story here, and I was thinking, isn't it amazing? The same sea, the same place. Uh, and by the way, uh, uh, that they had failed. The same nets, the same equipment that they used, but they had failed. And I thought, the same boat, the same ships, but yet they had failed. The same fishermen, <laughs> yet they had failed. What was the difference? It was the Lord. They, they did what, God, what, what Jesus told them to do. You know, I was thinking, you know, oftentimes we try it in our own strength, in our own mind, and we fail miserably. 
You know what? When, when we ought to be looking to him, we ought to be, what's the Bible says? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. I was thinking about, uh, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. I thought, you know what? We, need, we, we lack wisdom. We need to ask God for the wisdom that we need. And we need to look to God's word as, the, as, a, as a manual to, uh, to live by. And you know what? Uh, to take God at his word and believe it. And immediately they were successful. I don't know about you. It's pretty exciting to me. See, they were just men. <laughs> they were just men doing about, going about their regular routine day of, of life and time where they were living, making a livelihood, and all of a sudden Jesus came in. And Jesus came in their life, and guess what? <laughs> there was a great change that took place. You know what? <laughs> not, only, not only that, what, what did uh, uh, Peter do after that? <laughs> He left the fishing business because what does it say in the verse 11? It says, and when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. You know what they said? That might have been the greatest catch they ever had. I don't know if it was or not. But you know what? They didn't care, Brother Sean. They didn't care if it was the greatest catch. You know what? They had found something much more valuable than two, two ships full of fish. They found the Savior. They said, you know what? That fails in comparison to what we have in him. I was thinking, you know what? We go through this life. We may collect a few things of this world, but you know what? Whatever we collect fails in comparison to what we have in Jesus. You know what? When it's all said and done, and it's all said and done, and each and every one of us, the Lord tarries, when it's all said and done, the only thing that will truly matter is what we've done with Jesus what we've done with Christ, and what we've done for Christ. That's all that's going to matter. I was thinking, you know, they, they forsook it all. They said, hey, you know what? This is a great multitude of fish. Oh, the rest of the partners or their parents or whoever was left there and their family said, here, take it and use it. We're, we're out of here. We found something much greater. We found the Savior. And I thought, you know what? This principle of success is for every one of us in every aspect of our life. You know what? Just to follow him, just to trust him, just to take him at his word. I was thinking about that. I said, first of all, it was true in the area of salvation. <laughs> How did I get saved? <laughs> By taking God at his word. You know what? I never, <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't on, on Calvary when he hung on the cross. I wasn't there when he, they put him in the tomb. What am I doing? I'm taking him at his word. I'm believing the Bible. You know, see, when it comes to salvation, you know what? I wasn't there when he came, when he came out of the tomb. <laughs> it had been exciting if I was. That would have been a wonderful thing. <laughs> but you know what? I wasn't there. How, how, how do we get saved? By taking him at his word. Believing the Bible. Taking God at his word. You know, I think, I often think this in my own heart. And then I often say it. You know what? It's amazing. You know what? The most important decision, the most important decision that any of us will ever make is what we do with Jesus. Because we're not talking about just a lifetime. We're talking about eternity forever and ever. You know what? I believe that. I believe the most important decision anyone could make is what, what they do with Jesus. You know, I was thinking, boy, if you accept him as personal Savior, what a difference it'll make. Not only he'll give you a place in heaven when you, when you leave, this, leave this life, but you know what? Not only that, you'll have the help and the hope that you need to get through whatever, whatever comes our way. You know, I was thinking, if that's the most important decision, then what are we doing? We're taking, it, we're taking him at his word. You know what? I was thinking about what the Bible says in 1 John 2, verse 2. It says, and, and he is the propitiation of our sins and not our sins only, but the sins of the whole world. You know what? There's some people that li they believe in limited atonement. That means only a certain elect group will be saved. You know what? I, I don't know where they got that. They surely didn't get it from the Bible because there's not one verse that backs that. What, what, what do we see? We say, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You know what? The idea that Jesus Christ died for all, amen? And I'm thankful for that because you know what? If he didn't die for all, then maybe I would have been excluded. But thank God he died for each and every one. And guess what? I am included and I am thankful for that this evening. No greater joy, no greater peace, no greater happiness than know the fact that you're saved on your way to heaven. And how did I obtain that? By taking him at his word. Just believing him. 
taking in him at his word. I'm saved because God says so. <laughs> you know what? Some people go by feelings. Well, I don't feel saved. I got news for you. There's days I don't feel too saved either. You know, you're hurting, you're troubled and difficulties. You know what? I go back and say, well, what's the Bible say? <laughs> yeah, this is what I need to do to be saved. Yeah, did you do that? Oh, yeah, I did that. You know what? You don't not, you're not going by feelings. You're going by facts. Amen. And the facts is based upon God's word, what God's word says. You know, oftentimes people say, well, feelings, feelings come and feelings go. I got news for you. I'm not, I'm not preaching against feelings. I'm a pretty emotional guy. You know, I think about God, the goodness of God, and I can't help but weep. You know what? And I'm thankful for those feelings. But can I tell you something? I'm not basing my tears on the, uh, the, uh, because I, I weep is because that I'm saved. I'm basing upon God's word. Amen. You know what? Sometimes I cry when I'm happy and I'm cry when I'm sad. You know what? <laughs> Things, my feelings come and go, but you know what? God's word is the same today, yesterday, forever. Amen. How wonderful it is to know. <laughs> feelings change. I thought, you know what? I stand, <laughs> I don't stand on feelings. I stay, stand on God's word, the unfailing, unshakable, infallible, always abundant word of God. And I'll tell you what. Bless God. I, you know what? I was thinking this afternoon, I got what I need. Brother, I need to start living. I need to start living like I have what I need. You know, quit going through this life and saying, oh, well, well if I just had this. or I, No, bless God, I'm saved. I got God's word. I got what I need to make it. He's there to help me every step of the way. You know what? I'm blessed all the way around. All I need to do is just believe him and take him at his word. Man, just to take him in his word, believe his word. Take, I think in Isaiah 40, verse 8 says, it says, uh, it says, the grass withereth and the flowers fadeth, but the word of God shall stand forever. Amen. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> this is not just a book. <laughs> it's God's book. Amen. The infallible word of God, 1 John 5, verse 13. These things I have written unto you, that you believe in the name of the Son, uh, the Son of God, that mean no, I like that, ye, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. I like that, amen. He said, you may know that you have eternal life, and you may believe on the name of the Son of God. I like that. I, I think and oftentimes I've said it and I preach it. Man, you know what? I don't have a maybe so I got or a hope so or possibly so. I got to know so. Amen. I know that I'm saved. Someone said, how can you know? Based upon God's word. I've taken him at his word. Amen. And I've met the right criteria in which to be saved. I called on him, acknowledged him, realized I was a sinner on my way to hell, asked him to forgive him my sins, come into my heart and save me. And he did. I thought, you know what? I just took him in his word. Can I hear to tell you it's good? If I make it till next July, a year from a year from, from this month, it'll be 50 years I got since I got saved. I'm here to tell you, he's real. He's real. I know he lives. I serve a risen savior. Not a dead man in a tomb. Man, I got the real deal. Got the real thing. I just took him in his word. Man, he <laughs> gave me an opportunity. Someone showed me the truth from his word. And what did I do? I just took him at his word. Got saved. Man, that, that works. <laughs> that works for salvation. Not, by the way, it works for prayer. You know what? Just to believe him. The <laughs> Bible says we have not because we ask not. You know what I say? Boy, we need, <laughs> we need to believe it. I was thinking about uh, this morning, the message pastor preached talking about, he said, <laughs> he, he's, the, the, the leper came, came to him and he said, if thou, can, if thou will, thou canst make me clean. You know what he was saying? I believe you can. If you, if, if you will it, it will be so. You know what he had? <laughs> he was willing to take him at his word. Amen. He was willing to take Jesus at his word. I thought, you know what? This attitude of prayer. You know what? We need to pray believing. You know, pray. You know, someone said, well, it might not come true. You know, it might not. But you know what? We don't always know the will of God, but we have every right to ask. You know what? The Bible says that we can come boldly to the throne of grace. 
You know, I don't know how many times in my life since I've been saved I've read that and thought about that. I have a hard time coming boldly, Brother Sean. I really do. Because you know what? I know what I am. I know I'm a wicked sinner, deserves hell, and he's an almighty God. You know what? I don't come boldly, but I do go. Amen. I kind of come in and sneak around the door in the corner and just say, hey, I'm here. I can come boldly to the throne of grace. I, 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 I probably ought to come a little more boldly, but I know I'm saved. I know heaven's my home. I also know what I am. And I thought, you know what? You've been so good. You know what? Because it's not about me. It's all about him. It's all about what he's done for me, not what I've done for him. I've done nothing for him. He's done everything for me. At thy word. You know what? In the matter of prayer, what does James 4 verse 2 says? You have not because you ask not. In this matter of prayer, this little principle, just take God at his word and believe him. How many times we prayed in, in your life, my life, and God's worked it out. Not always as we thought, but God worked it out. You know what? <laughs> you know, we didn't need to, uh, not only for our salvation, we need to take him in his word. And not only as prayer, we need to take him in his word for service. You know, I was thinking about Matthew 6, 33. I just quoted a little bit ago. It said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. You know, putting him first. You know, over the years, so many times people get saved and they put Jesus in, they get Jesus in the picture, but he's not the center of the picture. You know, I was thinking, I think there's a, I don't know, I know cameras, I don't know if my camera on my phone would do, would do this or not, but there was cameras where if you take a picture, it would automatically center, Brother Dad probably would know that, it would automatically center the subject in the center of the picture. It was automatically do that. And I thought, you know what, we, we have many Christians that they got Jesus in the picture, but he's not the center of the picture. He's on the, maybe the peripheral of the picture, you know. Well, he, uh, like the old preacher used to say, you know, he said, put, put Jesus first. You know, not just a spoke on the wheel, but put him in the center. That's what the Bible says to do. We just need to take him in his word. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Put him first. Let everything else take care of it itself. You know what? If we would do that. I was thinking about in uh, Psalms 126, verse 6. He says, he that goeth forth weeping, bearing precious seed, shall doubtlessly come again, rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. You know what? <laughs> this idea of putting him first in, in our service at the day and time which we live. Realizing we have a wonderful opportunity. I said that years ago, I said it, and it's so, so, so very true today. There was a time in my Christian life after I was saved for a little while that I, didn't real, I realized I don't, have to, I don't have to serve God. I get to serve God. It was like when you were a kid and you had chores, or chores and you had to do your chores, you know. <laughs> Oh, do your chores. Do. And you know what? You got saved and you say, well, I'm a child of God. These are things I have to do. You know what? I don't have to do anything. I get to do it. Amen. You know what? I enjoy coming to church, getting around God's people. I enjoy I enjoy serving him. I, I look for areas that I could, could do more. I thought, you know what? Uh, to just put him first and to, and to serve him. You know, just to take him at his word. You know, what a wonderful opportunity we have in the day and time in which we live. You know what, idea that just, just to take God at his word, to believe him. I was thinking about this. When you tell someone something that's true, and you know it's true in your heart, you know it's true, and you tell them something, and they doubt you. I remember sometimes different people, you tell them something, you know, maybe you might tell them something that's true from the Bible. You say, well, this is what the Bible says. This is what you need to do. And they'll look at you and, like, kind of roll their eyes, you know, <laughs> like, whoa. <laughs> I, when they do that, I want to say, the answer's not on the ceiling. You know, I know you're rolling your eyes around, but <laughs> you, know, you know what? They roll their eyes, and you know what? When they do that, it's like they're saying, I don't really believe you. You know, I don't believe you. Or you tell your kids something when they're teenagers. When they're little, they believe it. <laughs> Wonderful thing about little kids, for the most part, they believe everything you tell them. <laughs> Need to be careful what we tell them, but they believe everything you tell them. But when they become teenagers, guess what? They don't always believe it. Uh, because it, usually they don't believe it because it doesn't fit what they want to do. But anyway, you tell them something and they don't believe you. you know, I said, this is, what's, this is what's best for you. No, they don't believe that. But I thought, you know what? How, how God must feel that way as we being his children, been born in the family of God, adopted into his family. And when he tells us something through his word, we just look at it and say, oh, hmm. <laughs> ah. We don't take it to heart. We don't believe it. We don't apply it. We just, let it, we just let it slide off. 
I thought, how many blessings have we missed? How many blessings have we missed because we haven't taken God at his word? Just to do it, what he has for the area of salvation, for assurance, for prayer, for service. I thought, well, you know what? <laughs> it just works. It just works. You know what? There's a God in heaven. He's real. Amen. <laughs> you know what? I was thinking this afternoon, I, I'm, I serve a risen Savior. I was thinking that's the difference. You pick any other religion. I don't care. Pick whatever other religion you have, pick the leader. And you know what? You can if, if that leader's dead, you'll go there, and here he is. He's buried in that tomb, or he's buried in that grave. You know what? <laughs> he's not there. He's risen. Amen? <laughs> we serve a risen Savior. And I thought, we just need to take him at his word, believe him. You know, the Bible's true. <laughs> it's for us today. We, don't, we just need to believe it. Take him at his word in the day and time which we live. You know, what a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful story. What a wonderful results. You know, it's interesting. Jesus, in verse 4, when Jesus told him, he said, uh, let down your nets, S. I've said that. I've said that before. You know what? More than one net. <laughs> but you know what? When Peter, uh, when Peter said, he, he said, nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. You know, I say, I think if he would have put more than one net down, he'd had more than two boats full of fish. <laughs> you know what? He said, Let's just drop the nets. But you know what? I'm not criticizing because you know what? He had enough faith to believe God. He had enough faith to believe Jesus. He let that. He said, nevertheless, at thy word, I'll let down the net. And he got the fish, and his life was changed for, <laughs> forever, never to be the same. And I thought, the lives that were changed by the life of Peter... Probably one of the probably one of the probably one of the best Christians ever walked the face of the earth. The difference he had made, you know what? Because he believed and trusted Christ, he took him at his word, and even God recorded it in His word for us today. You know what He said? Nevertheless, at Thy word, I'll do it. And I thought, you know what? That was good for Peter, and that's surely good for us.